They got trumped. The faithless electors from Colorado, the ones who wanted to swing the Electoral College away from Donald Trump, they got trumped by Colorado law in a courtroom late today. A judge said that allowing them to vote for a candidate of their choice, not the voters' choice, would undermine our electoral process. The judge denied their request for a preliminary injunction to unbind their votes. It's a win for Republican Secretary of State Wayne Williams, no real fan of Trump himself. He had called the electors' actions dishonorable, even evil. I believed very firmly and was, was confident that a judge wasn't going to take away the votes of almost three million Coloradans. I, that would be wholly surprising to me uh, that a judge would come in and say, Colorado voters don't matter. Uh, electors are free agents and can do whatever they feel like, regardless of what the people's votes were. The lawyer for the faithless electors, they prefer Hamilton electors, says that they have not decided whether they'll appeal today's ruling to the Tenth Circuit. Where is your humanity? A stark question for the city of Denver after video surfaces of officers stripping homeless people of their blankets on a cold winter night. The mayor now promises this won't happen anymore. Tonight we examine his claims that this was an isolated incident and that there are plenty of empty beds waiting for the city's homeless population. We return to a family business popular again and again with shoe collectors and thieves. We go out to the airport where they prefer you do not bring bags measured by the ounce and learn how many marijuana citations have been handed out. And we trump up Jackass Hill in search of an explanation. But first, Kevin Vaughn with our Nine Wants to Know team on how Denver treats those who sleep on her streets. The issue of homelessness has been front and center in Denver this year. Sweeps in the ballpark neighborhood in the spring and fall. Increased police presence along Cherry Creek in the South Platte. But this video, shot the night of November 28th outside the city and county building, touched a nerve. In it, Denver police officers took blankets and other belongings after citing three people for violating the city's ban on public camping. The confiscation of the blankets and tents is, is not a widespread practice of the police department. The reality is we had three individuals who were trying, who were protesting and were camping out in front of the city hall. Mm -hmm. uh, after repeated uh, requests to move along, they were cited. This has been going on for two years, and it's not the first time uh, that, that blankets and sleeping bags and tents have been confiscated. It's been happening for two years now. They're going to go lock his stuff in yeah, storage, or he probably won't be able to get it out later. Kayvon Calatbari shot the video and called Hancock's policy change a baby step. And although this is a great symbolic step in the right direction, I think we really need to dig into the root of these problems and why we're facing this homelessness epidemic and uh, simply not taking sleeping bags and tents isn't going to get that done. The city's ordinance requires police to offer verbal and written warnings and to share information about mental health and medical help, all before ever issuing a ticket for violating the camping ban. Nine Wants to Know pulled all the citations issued in 2016. So far this year, only seven people have actually been ticketed. For next, I'm Kevin Vaughn. The mayor's claim that there were 200 empty beds in homeless shelters Saturday night does check out. The Denver Rescue Mission alone had 197 empty beds. Even last week, when temperatures were below zero, there were more than 100 empty beds. The attorneys and the activists who are fighting the city over its treatment of homeless people are waging a battle on legal and on moral grounds. Jason Flores Williams, a lawyer for a group of homeless people suing the city for forcing them out of downtown, offered this direct challenge for the mayor. Where is your humanity? Where is your sense of justice? Where is your concern for human dignity? You have taken the poorest of the poor, the least amongst us, and violated their rights and their humanity. When will it stop? When will you do better? This city has many talented people involved in its governance. Use those minds. Find a creative solution. We can do better than this. Where is your humanity? Flores Williams' case is in federal court where a judge is deciding if it should be a class action lawsuit. Vice Limited, despite the name, is a perfectly legal business in our city, selling high-end athletic shoes for hundreds or thousands of dollars apiece. It's their specialty. Burglars specialize in burgling, and they hit that shop on South Broadway in Denver again. The last time, they held the owner at gunpoint. This time, they did their dirty work while all were away. Tried to 
pick the locks here. They even tried cutting the lock off. They cut the screen in, kicked it in. They hitched onto what used to be the frame right here, and they hitched it onto the back of a, uh, a big vehicle, and they just pulled it right off. You can see their footprint. They just kicked it in, broke off the uh, frame on the inside, and then came right in. You know, they started what was closest to the door. They just started pulling stuff off the shelf. They even took shoes that were in shipping boxes that were going to customers. They brought garbage bags in. They had people go out onto the sales floor and they started wiping uh, some of our shelves. It was a four-man operation and within five minutes they were gone. From the looks of it initially, it's about $70,000 or more worth of uh, inventory, well over 100 shoes. They definitely targeted what they were taking. They took some of the highest profile these sneakers that we have. This is our dream. I mean, we sacrifice a lot. Something like this is definitely a setback that you kind of have to mentally prepare yourself for to you know, get back to business and, and not worry about the things that could happen and just try to be as safe as possible. So if somebody tries to sell you shoes, store owner says he can't prove it, but he thinks that these were the same thieves that hit his store back in July. I root for the A-Line every day. I swear that I do. I, I hope it works out well. So is the train to the plane working today? Sort of. Eight to ten minute delays because of speed restrictions at a few crossings. Those have been the jam all along. That's per RTD's Twitter account. DIA is adding to a new yearly passenger record with each passing day. Hit a new yearly high yesterday with weeks of 2016 still left. 55 million people have traveled through DIA this year. That is about 11 times the population of Colorado. How many of them do you suppose got ticketed for illegally bringing marijuana to the airport? None. Not one. Shocked me too. Apparently the message is out that your world famous pot brownies cannot fly with you to grandma's house for the holidays. Airport spokesman Heath Montgomery makes us smarter on that subject in 60 seconds. The biggest thing that people need to understand is that you just can't fly with marijuana in Colorado, period. Um, it's illegal to transport under federal law in the air, number one. And then number two, as a property owner, the constitutional amendment in Colorado gives us the ability to set our own rules. So we're asking people to just leave it at home, throw it away before you come to the airport and fly, uh, that kind of thing. But uh, the rule, bottom line, really, is that you can't have it at the airport. We have the ability to issue a civil citation to people who um, decide that they're not going to follow the rules. and. Uh, to date, we have not had to write a single citation because everybody has complied with us voluntarily. Basically, you can't bring it to the airport and you certainly can't fly with it. If for some reason you were able to get through a checkpoint uh, with a small amount of marijuana undetected, it's still illegal under federal law to travel with the drug on a plane. So uh, you would be facing not, not a local jurisdiction with a possible civil citation, but you could be talking to federal officials, and I don't think anybody wants to do that. I think people overall get the message that you're not supposed to fly with marijuana even if it's legal in the state that you're visiting. And that's the message that we want people to take home with them this holiday season and really throughout the year. Okay, so zero marijuana citations at DIA. That told us one of two things. Either everybody's following the rules or the people in charge at DIA really don't care if you come through with marijuana. So we asked them for hard numbers. And DIA says last year, 30 people were stopped at security checkpoints carrying marijuana. All of them were totally cool, man, and agreed to toss their stash before getting on a plane. The Broncos defense is historically good. Almost makes you lose sight of whether the offense is historically bad. Then a trek to the top of Jackass Hill to answer the question, is that a reference to an animal or a person? Year. I did this story on the Newton Invitational Tournament. It's a great Colorado story about a family of 20 siblings that grew up with nothing. The 20 kids had a total of 62 kids, and then they had 105 kids. I was never going to remember everyone's name. This family just exemplifies what Colorado is all about. They work hard, they didn't give up. Those roots have grown into families spread across Colorado, the nation, and they come together every year because they know what it's all about, and that's being together. It is crazy how people want to talk about next wherever I am around town. I think we're starting to get the hang of this. And you get the, get the viewer feedback. 
Kyle Clark News at 6 is the most idiotic broadcast, similar to dumb, dumber, and dumbest. It will be easy to get rid of you. We like the viewer feedback. It's spicy. The nice ones aren't as fun. We'll read those later. Tonight you have aided and abetted in the destruction of true journalism. I like that. That's dramatic. That's a good one. Together, we're changing the way that people look at news. That's different. Keep the, keep the hate mail coming, though, please. Sunday in Colorado is game day. Start your day with the Broncos on Game Day Live. Sunday mornings at 9 on 9 News. You can feel it in the air. Another Colorado winter's on the way. Time to winterize your car. Check your battery, all fluids, and invest in some fresh wipers. Snow tires and good brakes are essential in Colorado, along with a complete emergency kit. But if you're really worried about winter driving, try taking the bus or light rail and leave your car at home. Get your 9 News forecast on the go. Download the app for your phone and tablet. It's free, so get it today. who have survived combat know what it's like to live with the memories. The Freedom Service Dogs can help veterans struggling with emotional and physical disabilities. Because Freedom Service Dogs are all shelter rescues, your donation today may not only save a dog, but also a veteran desperate to reclaim what has been lost. Help change their lives now at freedomservicedogs.org. We can be honest with each other around here, right? Broncos offense, it's bad. That is not news. But our Broncos guy, Mike Kliss, says bad is really all about perspective, and Kliss has tons of that. The Broncos are actually scoring about a half point more a game this year than they did last year when they won Super Bowl 50. What makes it unique about this offense this year is they have a real good quarterback, and yet they're still struggling overall on offense. It used to be a quarterback-driven league, and here Trevor Simeon is playing well, but the offense is bad overall. I don't remember ever seeing anything like that. Obviously, the other problems stem from receivers dropping the ball. Yesterday against Tennessee, they had fumbles. Those weren't on Trevor Simeon. You also have the running game that has been almost non-existent. Everybody likes to blame the offensive line. I've suggested maybe they need to shake up their running back, give Jawan Thompson a, a shot or two, rest Devontae Booker. Booker, the rookie, I think is slowing down because he had the two meniscus surgeries in the offseason. It's now 18 games that he's played, counting preseason. Last year at Utah, he played in 10. So it's natural that, that he's hitting the rookie wall. I'd like to see him use Jawan Thompson on short yardage anyway, mix in some Justin Forsett. Maybe that'll help that offense overall. One way or the other, the Broncos have to get it going because here come the Patriots. Here they have to go to Kansas City on Christmas night, and here come the Oakland Raiders. Somehow, some way, they have to win two out of those three games. Hello, everyone. Our weather across the state is going to get a whole lot colder in just a few days. But first, I want to show you the statewide snowpack. Why? In one week, our snowpack across the state has increased 20%. Currently, we're at 84% of average across the state. And you know, in the high country, some of our ski resorts got from two to three feet of snow just in the past seven days. Woohoo! Now, that snow and some strong winds causing big time warnings, especially when avalanche. And the, the currently we have high avalanche danger for parts of Vail, Summit County, and also the Front Range zones until tomorrow at 8 a.m. because of all that heavy snow just packing onto those very weak layers. Now, currently we have some pretty strong winds in and around the foothills, gusting up to 20, 30 miles per hour, even 50 miles per hour near Berthid Pass. Those winds will remain gusty in the overnight hours. Currently, that wind is blowing off some snow on top of those mountain peaks, and we also have some light snow in northeastern Colorado. Tonight, we have a cold front arrive. It's going to bring some very little snow into northeastern Colorado and some snow showers for our northern mountains, but no travel advisories have been issued. Tomorrow it's going to be a sunny day and our temperatures are going to be colder. Tonight we drop to around 16 degrees and let's show you that planning forecast. 38 for Tuesday, colder for Wednesday with a chance for snow. Thursday and Friday we're warming up and then by the weekend 
weather more fit for a polar bear. Kyle. All right, thanks, Blynn. A breakfast place with a Dr. Seuss theme might not seem to have any rhyme or reason. It has plenty of both, and it opens in Fort Collins soon. Ron Leonard planned to open up a breakfast spot in Fort Collins after he saw the success of places like Lucille's and Snooze in Denver. He and his partner came up with Sammy's Breakfast Bar. They really were not thinking Dr. Seuss all along until they tried to match their gray, orange, and blue interior scheme and realized it kind of looked like it had been torn from the pages of a Seuss book. My partner had already named it Sammy's Breakfast Bar. So then, you know, the whole idea of Sam I Am came into play. Green Eggs and Ham came into play. Um, but it was all rather accidental. But sometimes when you get on the right path, you know, it's like an artist doesn't really know what's going to happen until the very end. Deep. Sammy's Breakfast Bar near Harmony and College. It's the old South China restaurant location set to open Wednesday. Hey, we're always on the lookout for odd inspirations in life. You know how to find us. Email next at 9news.com or hashtag HeyNext. You cannot tell me this street sign isn't stolen at least a dozen times a year. We wanted to know the story behind it. Plus, your 12 fails of Christmas continue next. about the last Broncos game. An inside oh. info for me <laughs> on the next one. The Broncos huddle Wednesday nights at 6.30 on 9 News. It's a different kind of light. Definitely have to get accustomed to it, but once you do, you won't have it any other way. After the pavement ends, and where some might call God's country begins, is Del Mullen's home. It's a place where his neighbors never complain about noise. Not yet. <laughs> Many haven't been home in years. Del's been playing this music so long. 70 years. It sometimes surprises him how long it's been. Wow, that's a long time, ain't it? But in all of his 76 years. I never dreamed in a million years. Del never thought the other tune he'd be playing would sound like this. We build the Rolls Royce of steel guitars. This is why you get by on four hours sleep. Why you took a second job. This is why you taught yourself how to fix the plumbing. And spend hours juggling the bills. This is why you'll do whatever it takes to keep your home. And that is why we want to help. We are making home affordable. A free government resource that can make paying the mortgage easier. Now more options are available. Call 888-995-HOPE to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert today. So, I just moved in with his family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that! That's disgusting! Oh, poop already! You're making me nervous! Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. Our next question takes us to the area of Santa Fe and Mineral in Littleton, where we got wondering about a place name on the map. And that is how our Steve Steger set out to climb Jackass Hill. <laughs> These shoes are great traction. Welcome to the summit of Jackass Hill. 
If you've ever been in the area of Broadway and Mineral in Littleton, you've asked yourself the following question. Did that sign just say Jack Ass Hill? I feel like people that live in Littleton just know what Jack Ass Hill is. For those of us who aren't from the area, it's a novelty. A road in a park with the same giggle-inducing title? How on earth did it get its name? Did some jackass once stand atop this very hill, post a flag, and declare it theirs? Do you guys have any idea why this is called Jackass Hill? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've never even thought about that, actually. Maybe these jackass hillians can help. Maybe there was a bunch of donkeys living here. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and then they just decided to put houses on it and call it Jackass Hill. Really? That came out of nowhere. <laughs> I made that up. I honestly don't actually know that answer. <laughs> It's not that far from the truth, actually. Why is it called Jackass Hill? Well, the story is, and the story is mostly word of mouth. Around 1917, 1918, and there was an enterprising man who decided that he wanted to raise mules. Of course, mules and jackasses aren't the same. Hence, the nickname. He pastured them on the west side of the road. Of course, the war ended before he could sell them to the army. So the story is, is that he just abandoned them and then they were left there to starve. So the urban legend is some jackass left a bunch of mules in a field and the city embraced it, at least the name. A road and a park rooted in what adds up to be urban legend that really can't be confirmed. Like they say, a lie will travel around the world three times before truth gets its boots on. So you might as well enjoy it. Are you guys going to hold up one of those signs, the cardboard signs that says... We, we made it! One, two, three. We couldn't find a single home with an address on Jackass Hill Road, but that hasn't stopped the Neighborhood Association from making the most of it, selling Jackass Hill Ski Patrol shirts. It's a sign, a different one, and a most appropriate one that surrounds the Littleton Cemetery, a sign for the Lifetime Fence Company. Yes, I would say that that is fair, no matter which side of this fence you're on. If you see something that makes you stop and think, or smile, or grimace, we want to see it too. Email next at 9news.com. Get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. We are committed to balanced coverage around here, and that even applies to the holidays. Next. Donald was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat, and I'm doing a downward dog, and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. How could you not love him? I'm Adela Rakawa, sharing the stories of Colorado. Nine News, everywhere.
Let me always be with you. Come, let me love you. Come, love me again. Popular culture pushes us to make everything perfect for the holidays, but it's the thought that counts, and lots of thought goes into the Hatfield family tree. Dad Stefan tells us that they had some extra help from who he calls his three-nager, who removed every ornament within reach. Just to keep their sanity, they decided it'd be better if they kept their tree decorated that way. Merry Christmas from the Hatfields. Share your holiday fails with us next at 9news.com or give us a shout with the hashtag HeyNext. We are unabashed fans of joy around here, not just the litany of tragedy that makes up the evening news. If you are not taking a kid to visit Santa this year, there is no reason why you should have to miss out on the magic. Our producer Cody, again right over there, carried his camera along with his family. You ready? Patrol. Oh, those are fun. Corbin! Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, oh, it's starting. Oh, it's it's good. Good. Can you give that, too. Can you have a candy? Yes, sir. Did you like talking to Santa? Yeah. You told him what you wanted? Yeah. Is he going to get it for you? Yeah. Your feedback now. Aaron writes, hey, next. I will donate 50 bucks to charity if you can work in the word stupendous. Well, Aaron, I think that that is a stupendous idea. Most of our viewer mail tonight was about our story on how Denver is trying to help its homeless citizens. You make that donation to a charity in town that helps our homeless back to self-sufficiency, and I'll match your donation. Send me a note. Maybe some other next viewers would like to do the same. Perhaps we'll talk about it next time.